Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight and the final part of my jQuery and Ajax tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how to pass information back and forth to the server without page reloads. That is the core ability that Ajax techniques provide to you, and jQuery makes it real easy. If you didn't watch part seven of this tutorial, you definitely want to watch it because at the end of part seven, I actually show you the working web page that I am going to describe in this tutorial. So what will you learn? Here I'll show you multiple ways you can retrieve text and XML from the server using jQuery and Ajax techniques. Of course this works without a page reload. I'll also show you how to send data to the PHP server for processing. It will then send that information back. Like always, I'll walk you through the code and explain everything just as I have in the previous tutorials. You can see here on the left and right side of your screen all of the XML code that is needed. If this looks like gibberish to you, make sure you check out my XML tutorial before you proceed. Basically what we're doing here is we're just loading in customer information being an identification number, first name, last name, street, city, and zip. This XML file is going to reside on the server and we are going to use jQuery and Ajax techniques to retrieve it and display it on the web page without a page reload. This is the PHP code we'll use to double whatever value is passed to it and then echo the result to the web page. If this doesn't make sense, see my how to code PHP video tutorial. It's pretty simple. We're just posting a value to this PHP file. It is going to multiply that value times two and send it right back to us. But you can pretty much do anything you want in your PHP script and send it back using the exact techniques you see here. This is the actual HTML and jQuery code. Here I'm defining the beginning of my HTML file. I then go and retrieve the newest jQuery library. And of course you can hit pause on the screens to write this down or go to newthinktank.com and just download all of this code for free. Here I define all the event handlers for all the buttons on the web page. I also define what functions should be called when the events are triggered. For example, when the button named one button is clicked, my code will run the function named get info from server. This button's HTML code you can see down here in the second bulleted item in the lower left hand side of your screen. Here I'm using the Ajax function to pull text in a text file on the server over to my web page. A set of key value pairs are used to configure the Ajax request. All options are, of course, optional. And here I'll show you all the, all the optional options for the Ajax function. First off, you have type, and this refers to the type of request to make being either post or get, and the default is get. URL contains the URL to which the request is going to be sent. You would almost always fill a value in for this. The option success will tell you which function to call if the request succeeds. It passes three values to the function that precedes this keyword success. They are the data returned from the server, text status, which describes the server's status, and the XML HTTP request object. XML HTTP request is an object in the OOP sense that you will use to communicate with the server without reloading your page. The data option will contain the data to be sent to the server. Data type defines the type of data that you're expecting back from the server, be it XML, HTML, script, JSON, JSONP, or just simple text. The option error will tell you what function is to be called if a request fails. This function is passed three arguments, again, the XML HTTP request object, a description of the type of error that occurred, and an optional exception object. And a bunch more options are also available for the Ajax function, but they're not commonly used, so I'm not going to go over them in this part of the tutorial. Continuing on with the code, this function receives the text from the text file as well as the server status. It then adds the text to the element with the identification name first. And you can see here in the third bulleted item the code for that paragraph. Here I'm loading a value into a span element with the load function. The load function is passed the location of the PHP script and the data you want passed to that script. You could also pass a callback function that is executed when the request completes. The function serialize array creates a JavaScript array made up from the elements in the form named, in this circumstance, the form. That is the data passed to the PHP file named git double. You can see the PHP code above previous in the tutorial. This function is pulling the XML data from the server. Notice that I defined that I expect the data return to be of type XML with the option data type colon followed by XML. 
After the AJAX function is executed, the function post to page 2 is passed the data to be processed. This function receives all of the XML data for two customers and appends that data to the element named customers. The find method allows us to search through the XML data looking for a tag named customer. When found, I then assign the values that lie between the opening customer tag I defined and the closing customer tag I defined to the JavaScript variables. The final five lines of code are appending these values passed to the end of the element named customers. And the rest of the code is straight HTML code, which I am sure you understand. This is the end of my jQuery and AJAX tutorial. I hope it helped. If you have any questions or would like to see more on jQuery, AJAX, or anything else, leave them in the comment section below. And you can see here the final part of the HTML file. Till next time.